Hiya, we're going to do a painting today of the artist Marina Abramovich. Well, when I say we, yeah, I'm going to paint it, but I'm going to try and take you through the process of how I do it. Um, and it might be something that you can paint along with me or just hopefully pick up some tips um, or just come along for the ride and enjoy seeing the colours coming together and the face emerge from the canvas. Okay, so let me show you where I'm at. I'm going to start by mixing some colours. Um, now, here's my palette. Let's have a look. And I'm going to be working with a limited palette today. So I've basically just chosen these colours. I'm going to try and stick to them. I'm going to try not to add in any other colours. So you'll see that it's a slightly strange array of colours. Um, and I've got the alizarin crimson here, a burnt umber brown. This is a cadmium green light. This is a cadmium yellow. This is called Payne's Grey, which is a very dark bluish, blackish grey. And here's my white. Now, that's a weird one. That's a bit of an outlier, but um, because of Marina's lovely black hair, let's have a quick look at the, the painting that I'm going to be work the photograph that we're we'll working from today. So you can see her. It's a very interesting image because um, it's very stark black, white, red kind of theme going on there, which is a very classic combination in art. So I'm going to try and stick to that um, by using pale colours, reddish colours and the blackish colour. The green is a strange one as well. I'll show you what's with the green. The green is to kind of help make the pallor of her skin because she has such fair skin and really it's, you know, quite um, ghostly white. Um, so this green just helps us keep that nice, cool color on her face. So I've got in the red, okay, so a little touch of red mixed with the green and the white and hopefully what we'll start to get is this kind of putty colour. So you see the red, all the intensity has been taken out of the red. It's now a really sort of brownish, pinkish colour. It's still too pink for what I really can see most of what's in her face. I might use a bit of that colour in her face. It's a good start, but what I'm going to do is I'll take a bit of that away and I'll get a big dollop of white because I think I'm going to need it to be even cooler. I'm going to take a bit of that out of there. I'm going to try with a little bit more green in that one as well. More white. I'm going to use a lot of white in this picture, I think. So this is what I tend to do at the moment um, when I'm painting. is I'll start by mixing up a whole batch of likely colours that I think I'll probably use. And I'll mix and match as I go along as well, but this gives me a bit of a starting point. And I'm always looking to keep my colours fairly limited so that you just don't get all the whole range of colours sitting on the face. It just gets a bit confusing. It's an ongoing process for me. Um, I'm trying to learn how to do this, how to keep my colours under control a bit more. So by just choosing a few colours and trying to stick to them, that's what I'm hoping will happen. I'm actually wondering whether I'll even use that yellow. I might use it a tiny bit. So here yeah, I put a bit of brown in this one here. That's quite a nice skinnish colour there. Um, but I still don't feel like I've really found that the basic colour here. I'm just going to... Sorry about that. Just had a slight issue with... Um, Trying to get the face and the palette in the same place so that you can see what's happening with these colours here. Okay, let's go back to this base colour, the mother colour that I mixed. Take a bit of that out. And let's mix it with a bit of that. I probably will need something that pink at some point. Just 
and let's take it down a bit with a bit of brown and there is a bit of that around her not an awful lot though still she's so pale a little bit of this yellow oh that's too yellow isn't it too yellow it's never going to need that much yellow I'm going to pop that away keep a tiny bit of it mix some more white in with it Just tone it down I have a big problem with going too bright too saturated so too much color it's a very difficult process to try and teach myself how to calm it down a bit and be a bit more subtle I do have um, usually when I paint a picture as well I'll quite often have a picture of um, someone else's painting up on the on the screen next to the image that I'm working from and it'll be by a painter that I really admire and it'll be some sort of technique that I can see in their work that I would like to emulate and I just have it there just to remind myself all the time of what it is that I'm trying to do and try and stop myself from um, making rash decisions do you know what? I usually do end up making the rash decisions. I always seem to go, ah, yeah, I'm just going to try that. And then it all goes, all the plans go out the window. So that's just what happens. But it's all a process of uh, trying to teach yourself new things. And slowly, slowly, those things hopefully will make a mark and teach you something. I did hear something the other day that um, you need to make a thousand bad pictures before you start making the good pictures. Um, that feels very true. Can't be discouraged too much when you're making pictures that don't work out how you'd like. It's all part of the journey. Now I've just made that horrible brown color, which is uh, absolutely no good. Might be good in the neck later on, but pretty pointless to be honest. I'm just going to have to leave that alone and when, maybe I'll come back to it. I'm still not quite convinced I've got the main kind of whitish face colour that she's got there. You know, I still feel like it's slightly um, eluding me. So I'm going to go again here. So I've got my dirty old knife with a bit of that kind of pinky brown on it. Big dob of white and I'm going to go back to the green. Let's get back to that green and see if we can get that pallor poor old Marina I'm gonna make her look like a zombie okay wipe a bit of whatever was on my knife away again there put a bit more red in see what happens teeniest bit of yellow just to make something a bit different okay I think that'll do for now I think we might just make a start so what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to show you what I've already done which is Wait a second. Which is that I have prepped my board. So I've got a 40 by 40 centimeter board here, canvas board. I've put down a big wash of brush strokey, scrappy 
green acrylic paint, so a greeny, bluey mix of acrylic paint, quite watery. Put it down, it just makes that nice dark background, which I like to work on, um, because the colours seem to come out really nicely from it. So I chose green because I think, because I thought, well, because of those green tones in her face, the paleness of the skin, I wanted to keep everything very cool, and green is a very cool colour. So starting with a green colour, some of that might show through, some of it might come through in little gaps, some of the edges might show. So it will add to the picture in some way. Um, and what I did then is I, I gridded this up um, in order to, to get the proportions right quickly. So you can see that I divided this up into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten by ten squares, so four centimetres each that would have been to make a grid like this. And then um, I used a grid app on the iPad to divide the photo up to make the photo square so I cropped it completely perfectly square and divided it up into the same amount of squares so even though that's a different size I knew I could transfer the information over so I knew four squares along four squares down this bit of information is happening and I could start to build it up it's very rough it might change but it kind of gives me a security blanket at the beginning so that I kind of feel like this is the proportions that I want it's not going to suddenly spread out and grow I kind of want it to be like this and hopefully it will kind of stay somewhere around here but if it doesn't that's the beauty of things but okay so let's have a look another look at the image there we go there's Marina now this is her when she is performing her piece um, called The Artist is Present that she did um, a few years ago and she famously sat in a room and people that came to see the exhibition would come and sit opposite her at the table and she would stare into their eyes for a minute and then they'd get up and leave and she was, uh, she was making a connection with every single individual that came in um, and it was a very powerful piece, it was amazing and it was very moving to lots of people. She's uh, an incredible performance artist, Marina Abramovic, she's been working all through the 70s, 80s, 90s, she's um, done some amazing work, so, and it's very accessible I think as well, you know, it's not too strange. Okay, where to start? Let's see, I'm going to start with I think some of the pinkish tones around her face, around her eyes, um, just because I can understand those. They make sense to me. Um, oh, move that over a bit and then that'll be a bit better. Okay. Um, never anything to really worry too much about you know especially when you're painting with oil paints oh it's a very bright pink that that's crazy pink so I'm going to put a tiny bit of brown in that try and take it down a bit and like I say I'm a bit of a one for going a bit too saturated so I have to be very careful yeah oil paint I'm going to try and do this all in one session I'm going to try and do it all in about I don't know hopefully about two hours and I can keep changing, moving, putting things on top of things as I go along. It's no problem. The beauty of oil paint. I'm, I'm actually like being a bit naughty here because what I'm doing is one of the funnest bits of the whole painting straight away, which is not really a good idea because I think, always think it's a good idea to have delayed gratification, if you know that concept where you don't do the good stuff first, leave the good stuff till later, you do the difficult bit first, um, and then things are much more gratifying later. But hey, this is what I've done. And now I'm gonna leave the really difficult bits till till later. So I'll give I'll lower myself into a full sense of security thinking, wow this painting's going brilliantly. Wow, I love it so far. And that is really because I just haven't done the difficult bits yet which uh, would always, always trip me up. So, you know, some, sometimes you just never learn, do you? Okay, 
so there's some bits of pink and now I'm going to just sort of hover around the face a bit and see if I can pop in some more pink bits because why not it's on my brush and I'll see what happens so there's a bit of pink there a bit of pink there help me sort of find that nose a bit more if I start to draw draw it in a bit now And of course we've got the lips coming up in a minute, which is these big expressive lips. I'm just going to mark them in a bit. I know that's not how they are, but I, th I suppose I think that when there's some of the main colours down around the face, it kind of just helps to start adjusting and thinking about everything else in the whole picture. So, just got to go for it. Got to go for it. Got to put something down. Pin your colours to the mast. And know that you can change it later and it's okay bit of a darker red there which is quite nice Beginnings of a painting are always quite pleasurable. And it's the bit sort of in the middle and towards the end that can sometimes be perilous. Now I'm just using a bit of the burnt umber mixed with a bit of that Payne's grey to really darken it down a bit but it's not quite black so I'm not going to use a black paint in this, it's try and avoid black um, and create your own type of blacks using browns and blues mostly. I haven't got a blue in this palette today. The Payne's Grey is as close as I'm going to get to a blue. So that to me hopefully is going to help me restrict the colours. You know she doesn't, I can't see blue in this picture. Mm, possibly but I'm going to make that green. So when you're looking at skin tone, when you're seeing artists putting down all these weird colours in skin. You think, where are they getting that from? Everybody can see things differently and I think, you know, well, what I, I'm doing is I'm looking at the skins and I'm searching for any hint of of colour, of, of how, to, how to paint that skin tone. It's not just one flat colour. So I'm seeing tiny hints of green, tiny hints of, of pink, then I want to put those in. So it might mean that I'm exaggerating them sometimes. Um, and that's what you'll see in a lot of people's paintings. You'll see a kind of exaggerated version of those skin tones. So try and see that for yourself. Try and look really closely at, at, at people's skins and see all the sorts of colours and the tones that you can identify there. And then that could be a starting point to painting um, with a bit more expressive colour. I 
like it. You've sort of got the features kind of popping out there now. That's a bit weird. Um, I actually think I'm going to put down some description of the hair because I think that's quite important because her hair is so dark. It might make a difference to how I feel about things that happen in the face later. I know I'm going to need to put that really dark hair in. So if I do a bit of that now, um, it might help me painting the skin. I found that, that sometimes if I just concentrate on the face too much and then when I go to put in the background, the hair, the stuff around the face, I go, ah, I needed that information there at the beginning so that I could adjust what the balance of the tones and the colours in the face. So sometimes when there's something really dramatic in the background, or like in this case, the hair, it's good to get it in, even if it's just a suggestion. I'm actually not even painting from the same photograph that I actually drew from, it's a bit weird. I drew this picture out from one photograph and then I saw this other one, which was really similar. And I thought, I'm just gonna try and sort of merge the two ideas together. So you see, I just painted, I had an ear there just now. So I just had to paint out because uh, actually in, in this picture that I'm now looking at, Okay, let's put a bit more dark up there. That's a very flat sort of colouring in way of painting there, but I'll try and spice it up a bit later when I get round to doing the hair. But at least it just gives me that, the tone. So the tone is the, the light and dark. It gives, us, gives me that darkness that I might need reflecting in on the face later. Okay. Um, you know, I think I am going to tackle the eyes a bit actually, why not? Um, so the whites of the eyes, she's got very pink whites of the eyes because she's crying. So I know I can take that white down a bit with a bit of pink, that's still too bright. Again, the whites of the eyes, rarely white, often grey hints of blue. In fact, there's hardly any sort of whitish colour here. It's very dark. She has green eyes, hazily green eyes. So I'm going to need to use my cadmium green with a good dollop of the brown. Um, light a bit of the eyes that I can see, so I'll just put a bit of that in. Now so you can, you might be able to see that as you drag the thick paint, which I'm not mixing with any medium or any turps, so it's quite dry, as you drag it across the surface, you'll get little bits of the green paint underneath showing through, which adds, I think, a lot of interest.
And you can use any color you want underneath. You know, a traditional way of doing it is you want kind of burnt umber brown, which just looks really, really nice. Um, or some people use sort of a dark gray, black and white even. Um, I quite often use reds and, and oranges, which is quite exciting. Those bits of red and orange peeking through. see what's happening over, this, over here. She always looks quite sort of heavy lidded. I don't really know she has these expressive, sad, this questioning sort of eyes. little glistening tears are quite quite white so I'm going to pop those in now because it's too much fun not to Starting to put a bit of the more skin tones in around the eyes. It's possibly a bit bright as usual, as, as is my way.
is very bright, that colour that I've just put down there. That's probably the brightest colour that I've put down. That's going to be a good one for the highlights. Going to try and calm it down a bit in a minute after I've done this fun bit with all the light bits. Highlights are like one of the funnest bits, and again, I'm using up my delayed gratification by going ahead and putting them in so early. But hey ho, I'm going to get the big brush out and do some large areas of the, the skin now, I think, just to sort of make up for all that fun that I've just had. Um, so I'm going to get a bigger brush. And I want to see the colour palette again. Here it is. Now I'm going to try and find a nice happy medium between the green and the pink. It's not too pink, so I'm going to put some more green. This is the green over here is too green, but if I put some of that green back into this pink, it's still going to be super bright. I'm going to put a bit of brown in there, try and calm it down a bit. I'm going to put a tiny bit of that grey in there, calm it down a bit. Right, not quite sure how this is going to be, I'm going to just, oh still very bright, how is it so bright? bright white. Really difficult. Although it's a nice colour, it's got sort of stony, putty-ish kind of feel to it, but it's still it's too bright for most of what I need to do, so I'm going to have to keep trying to tone this colour down. The brown with the grey green, I mean to me that looks really dark now, this is very difficult. <laughs> Still, actually it's not too bad, even though it looks really dark on the palette, it still looks bright here. So I'm just going to start to try and make some moves. How about that for a bold move? Just go for it, tweak it later. But it's a fairly innocuous um, medium sort of colour, which means it's quite good because I can work back into that and go a bit lighter or a bit darker on top. But this kind of breaks the ice, if you know what I mean, of all these flat areas that I need to fill in. Fill in, it's like colouring in, isn't it? Um, Try not to be like colouring in, you know, try to think about the variety of the brush strokes and doing something a bit surprising to, to liven things up every now and again. Letting yourself have weird ideas and trying it, just see what happens. I'm going to put a fair bit of this down to just get me, get me going. Um, edge meets an edge, it's always quite interesting, especially with the hairline, you don't want it to be too drastic. I 
Well, I'm just going to put a bit more of this down and then try and move on. Do something else, but this is quite an important bit because I'm just making it happen. And I can change, I can adjust, I can overpaint all of this, I hope. After all that tweaking, I'm quite pleased with this kind of basic colour that I've made. It's a fairly flat image here, it's not too contrast, it's not really strong contrast. Usually I like to work with something with a lot of shadow and light, you know, gives you that nice dramatic contrast. So that this painting this image doesn't have that. It's quite a lot of sort of flat area that looks kind of similar. I don't know what I'm doing. sort of come to the end of my love of that colour but I've made a horrible horrible mess with it haven't I so let's start to try and claw back some sort of some sort of aesthetically pleasing <laughs> painting from this. No, it's too bright. No, it's quite an interesting grey green that I've just mixed up there, which is not quite what I'm seeing on the picture, but I like it. I'm gonna go with it. green tint that was something I was quite interested in. So, so you can see I'm starting to paint over this with some quite quick brush strokes in some of these areas that were a bit too flat, all the same colour. See what I can do here. Paint this area around the nose. Nice and zombie, Marina. Apologies, apologies. So I'm trying to use just quick brush strokes here. It's a bit of an unknown quantity, I don't really know what I'm after but I'm hoping that some of it will stick I like brush strokes going in all sorts of directions and I'll probably get an even bigger brush out later Lots of colours coming out there. Let's quickly merge them together a bit.
so I'm going in with more greenish colours here. spooky but I'm enjoying it so I'm gonna keep going I think what will happen in, in a little while you can see it's very green at the moment let's have a little bit of a closer look I will put some more pinks and creamy colors in in a little while I'm still trying to build up that cool palette Poor old Marina. She's very sad. She should be sad. She's got a green face. Right, let's have a go. I'm going to try and do this cheek here, which is again a lighter green. One minute. She's got this line coming down here, which I've sort of ignored. Going back in with some pinker colours now, so let's see what happens. See if that evens things up a little bit. So it's a nice idea to think about cools and warm colours when you paint, you know, how you've got those that difference happening. It's all about differences. So you've got cools and warms, lights and darks. for me what I'm worrying about today is, is the temperatures, the, the cools and the and the warms. Oh that's a beautiful colour. That is a gorgeous colour. I need to put some more of that in there. Ooh, maybe possibly a bit more. Put some thicker bits of paint here. I think I might go quite chunky on this picture. Quite expressive. The good thing about trying to video it as well is I sort of try and keep the pace up a bit, um, which is an, a, a, a nice exercise in painting for me. Um, stop your faffing, just got to get on with it. 
don't worry too much about it. At the end of the day, it's only a painting. Yeah, so I'm enjoying this nice pink colour. It feels like that's evening up with this kind of a, a green attack that I was putting on this painting. Evening it up a little bit and making it a bit more exciting. Oh, and a nice chunky raised pieces of paint. Let's have a look at that. Also, one of my big problem areas is the mouth. Always seem to have to repaint and struggle with mouths. few more watches of some of this nice dark colour, well, not dark but pink colour, and then I might go in with a smaller brush and see what I can do. Try and make those lips look a bit more attached to the face. So this is good and I'm actually painting a lot thicker than I normally would, which I'm enjoying. I'm going to just try and keep going with this. I mean, it might all backfire and I can't put any more paint down and something's not right and then you have to leave it to dry or I have to scrape it off, but at the moment this is what this painting seems to be doing. It's a bit too soon again. I can't help it. Wow, 
It's all going a bit crazy up here. It's possibly a bit too crazy. I'll probably step back and have a little look how crazy this is going. I might just keep plowing on because I'm enjoying myself now. Getting in the swing of things, chucking on the paint. Enjoying this, the thickness of the paint that's happening here. Let's do something up there. That's a bit too green up there. Let's get rid of that green. Right, I think I'm going to have to address the lips. I can't leave them as they are for much longer, happily. Let me just find the edge of the face here. I've got a nice, quite bright white ring of light around the face, so it's quite nice for me to find the boundary of the face. just kind of noticed that there's this is too kind of light up here the shadow of the eye socket so the eye sitting back in its socket quite important so I'm just going to put in a bit of that shadow that I can see there that's a bit of Payne's grey. Mix with a bit of brown, mix with a bit of everything up there. Give it that. It's quite a nice grey colour actually. Quite good to offset the, the pink. shadow there so that's helpful so 
Well, I'm not doing much talking at the moment, I think I'm concentrating. All oh, that kind of grey purple colours come in from nowhere. A bit weird. Not always my favourite thing to do is purple, it seems to appear as if from nowhere. But I needed a bit of shadow, so let's go with it for now. Right. Um, right, I'm going to try and address this. a bit around the mouth first, pop in some colours anyway, see how they feel. The nose knees work, I know the nose knees work. So let's try and get the colour right, because at the moment there's, there's no good colour on those lips, it's not right. Trying to mix up a darker red, a red that has a bit more oomph in it. like that I feel obliged to make sure it shows up in some other places or so I'm just going to pop it in other places here for a minute. Easy, this painting. I don't really know whether it's going to kind of hang together properly or not. Can't seem to get a dark enough red. The thing is, when painting lipstick as well, it's always quite difficult so it doesn't look too kind of stuck on. So I always feel obliged to sort of bleed it out around the edge a little bit. And I don't want to make too much of a big deal about that midline. So there we go. I don't know if we have a big fish lips, but quite nice actually. But I need to rein that in a bit. just kind of like push the lips around a bit and sort of push them out of their their boundaries and squish them about into the face a bit more which is you know whether that's a good idea or not
Hmm. It's not quite her yet, is it? The lips are very expressive in terms of telling you about the person. Okay, don't hate it. I'm going to work with that for a little bit. I'm going to get the little brush out and see if I can find a bit more shape. And when I've got that dark colour on my brush, I'm going to just look for a few more places it might need to go. So yeah, there's a few areas that I can see that need tweaking, that need a bit of attention. This eye looks all wonky at the top. a little bit. It's not good to have a, a hard line between a dark colour and a light colour. Looks too stark. So I'm going to tidy up this nose a little bit as well. soften up the eyebrows a bit there they're in that they're sort of a bit hemmed in by the painting around it so they need to soften up and sit on the face a bit more wow her face is looking really crazy and messy you know look at her lovely smooth porcelain skin in the photo and she's pretty much been in a in a car wreck here you know and these brush strokes are just all over the place, chunky, going every which way. I didn't really mean for that to happen, but I'm not unhappy with it. It's quite lively, and um, I just need to sort of pull it all together a little bit. Um, Yeah, so this painting has taken on a, a life of its own, a direction of its own. But one day maybe I will intend to do a painting that's, that's got kind of more smooth blending. Um, 
I maybe can match that kind of skin of hers a bit more. But this is what this painting is today, and that's fine. And I am enjoying it. So I'm not going to overstress it. Um, I know I'm a bit confused about what colour this bit of nose is. Okay, so these highlights on the lips hopefully are going to give me some some more of the feel of these big juicy lips. So I'm going to go right in and try and do those right now. mind those lips now. I still feel like this nose is not quite got a shape. It's got quite flared nostrils I notice actually. Maybe I haven't done those so much. So it's all about putting light areas against dark areas, you know, to be able to make some of these definitions. back over some of these green areas that I did at the beginning now feeling that they're too green toning them down a bit it's still very chunky and a bit crazy Okay. 
interruption there. Let's crack on. I can see that this lip is all the wrong shape. It's quite good to have a break sometimes and be made to look for something for your children because uh, you can come back and suddenly notice the terrible mistakes that you've made. That's a bit better already, isn't it? Okay. Now I start putting crazy colours all over the place. All of a sudden. Why do I keep saying that? I just keep feeling very sorry for her. She looks so sad. I think actually this is the moment in the performance where she, in between each uh, person that comes and sits down in front of her, she closes her eyes and then when the person is sat down, she opens them and she gives them her full attention. And she was famous for working with this one particular um, performance artist who was her partner and they did lots of projects together um, and but you know they had split up a while ago and he sat down and so when she opened her eyes there he was and uh, she hadn't seen him for ages and it was very emotional and she starts crying and she actually so, so she breaks her epic concentration and for a while it's quite moving. Wow, this nose is going a bit crazy. So much paint is on it now. It's practically, you can grab it off the page. Okay, right, I need to work on some of these other areas, don't I, to sort of make sure it all adds up. Wow, that's a bright pink. I need some of that around the eyes. We need some more bright pink. That's going to really pop out against the green. Now I've got it, I'm gonna gonna pop it around a few places. lovely actually. Don't overdo it Amy, don't go mad. Rain it in. Okay. Let's get the bigger brush out to try and get into the, some of those larger areas try and work out what colour some of these bits are. I mean, the reason I've left them really is because they're, they're pretty kind of neutral. So let's go back in with some of this kind of just neutral colour and just see how I feel about it, if it needs to be changed. So it is, but if not, great. I filled in the bits, that, the mystery pieces, the mystery pieces of the jigsaw.
all these greens and pinks together now are quite pleasing me. You know, just some color, color combinations are your thing. And, and green and pink is definitely a thing for me. start playing around with some thick chunks of paint now just to give you some more of that kind of dynamic brush stroke movement that kind of started happening old marina. Now, maybe her face looks a bit wide. Now, I went with the drawing that I've done, but still I feel like this is too wide, which is slightly a problem, but what I'm going to do is I quite often find this, even if you copy a picture, the proportions exactly, um, you still have to make adjustments that just don't feel right, even if on paper that should be right I don't like it doesn't feel right it makes it look too fat I'm gonna bring all those lines in a little bit sometimes I mean painters have done this over the years anyways like give people um, elongate their necks more, thin out the face. So I'm going to see, I'm going to bring this in here. And then and that feels a bit better. Let's quickly see if we can try and do this ear. I'm going to try and do it fairly quickly. I don't really like to get too involved in ears generally. I like to be fairly suggestive. I mean they're important to give the face shape. probably do is I'll probably block out some colour around the edge of the face um, later on which will give the face a bit more shape as well. Do you want to have a quick, let's have a close up. So it's coming together a bit. I think I'll just leave the camera on to this area now. So you can see poor old Marina.
also a suggestion of an ear. I think some of it is really complicated. You know, no matter how many years I've painted, I still couldn't tell you exactly what they look like and how they're constructed. I'm still going back into those eyes with reds and pinks, even though I did them so long ago. I just keep thinking that they need to be a bit more red, a bit more pink. So looking for kind of areas that need a bit more shadow. You know, I don't want it to be all one tone you've got to see some differences so we're getting there though we're getting there thank god because this video is going on an awful long time isn't it if you are still watching well done Let's go back in to find this hairline over here. I still I think that I didn't bring it in close enough again, which is going to help with that feeling of the uh, face being feeling a bit too wide. Bring the hair in a bit more. some chunkier paint in the hair as well I need to get that feeling of that big black glossy hair I've got this lovely um, plait as well I wouldn't mind seeing a suggestion of that coming in I actually think I might end the video now because um, it's almost finished Although maybe I will just put in some of that background because that will be quite dramatic when we see the face popping out from the background. I've got to paint over this this green that's sitting here. another trail of tears. I need to make sure I get in.
nicks as well. Nicks are, are always a problem because they're not the fun bit, so I leave them to the end. and then realise how complicated all the colours are. I'm a bit annoyed that I didn't go and deal with it earlier. Instead of leaving it to where I'm feeling like I want to finish. more Payne's grey needed. Get this hair in. Gotta whack it all on. I'm not quite seeing that there. There we go. Look at that. Get that pony, uh, not pony, that plait that she's got there in. Now I haven't really done much to the hair, have I? I've just used Payne's Grey. I haven't gone in with some, I mean, if I put a tiny bit of white in the Payne's Grey, I could do some of these little highlights of the plait. That's quite nice. It's quite difficult where the hair meets the skin for it not to look too stuck on. Go back in with 
some skin color there. Push it back into the hair. Just so. Okay, I'm going to leave that for a bit now. I'm going to mix up a colour. Now on the picture, on the photograph, it's a very nice cool white background and she's wearing a crisp white shirt. So I think I'm going to do both those things. I'm going to try and get both of those things down. So I'm going to start off with the white shirt and get, get a nice clean brush. Just whack some pure white onto it. And if you can see this, I'm gonna step back a little bit. Maybe go back to our view of the photo. When I said it's pure white, I'm just going to put a tiny tint into it. I can't quite bear for it to be so white. Put a tiny touch of grey into it. Wow, that's really thick. I'm just going to use that as a suggestion. That might be it. I'm going to put some over here actually. Just to offset that black hair. Remember those contrasts that we're looking for? And she's got some of the white shirt coming out here. Which is just on the level of her chin actually, so it's just about here. Lovely. Now, I'm going to try and do some of this background colour. So, I need to mix up a colour. Because I'm sort of almost finished with this here, I'm just going to put this white straight on top of some of this pale colour over here. It's going to have some of the face colour all mixed in with it. So, there you go, it's looking a bit pinkish. Now, I want it to be a bit grayish. I'm going to get some of my Payne's grey, which is bluey grey. And that's more like it there. Nice, slightly greeny grey white. Now, I'm going to use a sort of thicker, floppier brush for this. Maybe this one, four centimeters. I'm going to put a bit of terps on it so it's not going to be too stiff. I'm going to get some of that paint on it. And then we're going to try and find those edges. Now I'm leaving the tiniest glimmer of that dark green because that is going to look nice. So 
really fun thing to do now. Because it makes a big difference. It's always fun when you do things that make a big difference. Now, shall I leave any of that green showing around the edges? Or shall I just paint over it? Okay, that's quite a thin piece of paint there. So not as chunky as the face, which I'm hoping is going to be that nice contrast. You've got the thick chunkiness of the face coming forward, and then some thinner washes of paint in the background. I think actually I'm going to put the more of the white shirt in at the bottom. I think she needs it. Oops edging that out there so I can get to the bottom of that. And I'm going to put that in there. just didn't really like that abruptly finishing there. And now that I've used that white, I feel like I need to put some white on her face. Remember what I said before about Sometimes you need to do the background earlier on so that you know what you're doing in the face. This is one of those situations. Now I've got that bright white, it looks so stark against everything else. And I can see it's as white as the glimmers of the highlights, her tears. It's as white as that. That shirt is the same as that, but I don't have that on the face. So now I need to go back in and do some more. So I think I'll do some final tweaks, not very much more, five or 10 minutes more, and then it'll be finished and I'll put a finished picture up of the, the painting. Um, thanks if you watched the whole of that video. I hope you enjoyed it. I um, hope it inspired you. Give me some comments, give me some feedback and have a great day, bye. because um, stops your faffing, just got to get on with it. Don't worry too much about it, at the end of the day, it's only a painting. Yeah, so I'm enjoying this nice pink colour, it feels like that's evening up with this kind of a, a green attack that I was putting on this painting. Evening it up a little bit and making it a bit more exciting. Oh, and a nice chunky raised pieces of paint. Let's have a look at that. Also, 
one of my big problem areas is the mouth. Always seem to have to repaint and struggle with mouths. <laughs>